It's a little bit breezy, it's a little bit cool, and for the first time in four years, we get to say welcome into playoff Saturday here in Spartanburg. Welcome into Terrier Vision today. The Wofford Terriers, for the first time since 2012, will compete in the FCS National Playoffs as they play host to the Charleston Southern Buccaneers. Wofford comes in on a roll. The Terriers have won four straight games, eight and three overall, second place finishers in the SOCON, ranked number 19 in the country. The the Buccaneers, they've won two in a row, six out of seven. They come in with a record of seven and three, and they are the Big South Conference champions. These teams have not met since 2010, though Wofford certainly dominates the all-time series. 13 wins against no losses, but this is a totally different Charleston Southern program than the one the Terriers saw six years ago. Keep in mind, when you watch this package today on Inside Wofford Football, due to NCAA regulations, we are only permitted to show two minutes worth of highlights. So here we go. It's playoff time. Game, playoff game. Everybody understands that. The thing that I want you to understand is this that we're in a situation to where we've been multiple times this year. It's nothing new for us. Our back was against the wall ever since we failed to beat the center. And we kept doing it, and we kept doing it, and we kept doing it, and we kept doing it. And the only thing that changed was the name of the team. We stayed the same team. We did what we do, and we did it better than they did it. They are a good football team. But we've played better. The reason that we beat those other football teams was because we played better than they did. And that's going to be the story today. Who's going to play hard? Who's going to execute at the highest level? Who's not going to beat themselves? By missed tackles, busted coverage, ball on the ground, guys going the wrong way, missteps, et cetera, et cetera. This opportunity for all these seniors that are in here will never come again never come again. And so I think it is up to everybody here to understand that everything you got within that brain, within that body, you give it. And you give it, and you give it, and you give it until that last whistle blows. I don't know if this is going to be a close one. I don't know if it's going to be one of them days where everything works, everything's easy, everything's great, or it comes down to a last play, a last kick, a last tackle. You know and I know that football games go like that. Even if you're a freshman, you know the difference in games. Seniors, you've seen it from the top to the bottom and all spots in between as far as how a game can go. Be in the moment. I'm telling you, be in the moment. You cannot afford to lose your focus. Special teams, critical. Somebody gets hurt, know who's in. And then fight as hard as you can fight every play. Don't take the easy way. Don't take the cheap way. Don't be the guy that's going to get the holding call. Work your feet, work your technique, play ball the way it's supposed to be played. If we do that, everything's going to work. Everything's going to work. I've told you the same thing for the last month. If we do what we do, <coughs> it's going to work. We're not going to come up short. It's going to work. So take care of business. Do your job. And remember this, the ball, the ball, the ball. That's going to be the difference maker. Us taking care of it and us taking it away. 
Let's come ready. Let's for Busnell with a single back who will stay in to block. Busnell, pocket breaks down, rolling left pass, batted down. Terrence Morris got his hands up and knocked it down as the quarterback tried to release it. Ingbone, Charleston Southern jamming the line. Long handoff right side. He'll score standing up. Touchdown, Terriers. Here's Burns to do the punting. Wofford bringing pressure, and it is blocked. Ball loose on the ground at the two-yard line, and it is covered there. Wofford football, they blocked it. Third down, Busnell with a back sidecar right. Terriers rush for Busnell hit in the end zone. Did he get out of the end zone, or is it a safety? Where is he going to be spotted down? He is tackled right at the goal line, and it is a safety. Three out of the gun, Goodson. Play action, drops to throw, chased out of the pocket, stumbles as he rolls right, going to throw it deep, and he throws a laser, and it is caught by Dorian Lindsay out of bounds near sideline at the Buccaneer 47. Third and six from the Buck 32, out of the gun, Goodson, everybody tight with two tight ends, handoff up the middle long, pops through the pile, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! They won't review that one. Three down linemen, they will rush for Busnell in the pocket, scrambling to his left on the run, throws, and it is intercepted at the far sideline. We've got a flag down. The pass was picked off by Devin Watson. And a scrimmage clock rolls on first down, Busnell. Pass intercepted. Devin Watson picks it off. 40, near sideline, 50, 40, 30, out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Terrier football. Devin Watson with the pick. No idea where Bushnell was throwing that thing. Devin Watson had the underneath coverage in the zone, and he did a phenomenal job of intercepting it and getting loose down the sidelines. The Wofford Terriers are going to advance with their ninth win of the year. going to drink this do yeah. for you because yeah. it was one of those do days yeah. you did it. yeah you did it again yeah you did it again yeah you did it again yeah. listen fellas we, we, we faced a heck of a team we faced a heck of a team we battled we battled and we battled the big thing is this it's not one side or the other, it's us. It's about team, it's about finishing the journey, and we finish the journey this week. <coughs> next week, next week starts tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have seven days off. Yes, sir. We can't kick back. No, sir. We gotta get to work. Yeah. We play the Citadel. Yeah. You know it, I know it. Here's the cool thing. All expenses paid. Then when we get down there, you got to work for it. You guys did an unbelievable job of fighting, hanging in there, and doing what it took to win against a heck of a football team. I love you. Take care of yourselves tonight. Make sure that if you got any nooks and crannies that are sore after this one, you better get into the treatment room and go in a hurry to get it right. Yeah! I got it. Yep. Yep. Hey, Take a knee, please. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespasses against us. Coach, if I told you you were going to rush the ball for 140 yards and win the game pregame, what would your thought have been? Uh, probably wouldn't have believed you, but at the same time, uh, anything has been possible this year. Uh, we faced a Tremendous challenge in Charleston Southern. Uh, they're very good defensively. They're very good offensively. Uh, they're a complete football team. We knew going in that it was going to be uh, one of those knockdown drag out uh, situations. Um, we uh, we played hard. Uh, we were doing our best, 
but uh, you know we we just it, it was so tough to just try to get a first down. Uh, thank God the defense uh, had a great day. Uh, they kept grinding, grinding away, and uh, Jamie and his crew had some plays. But uh, you know we 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 fought back. Uh, kicking game, field position was huge, and uh, it. <laughs> I, I'm just thankful uh, that we came out on top, uh, irregardless of what it looked like. Uh, I, the one thing that I know it looked like, you, you had two teams that didn't want to lose. You had two teams that, that fought. You had two teams that wasn't going to back down. And, uh, and both teams were uh, coached and coached well. And uh, there was a tremendous amount of want to from both sides. You lose Dotavius Wilson, yeah. Lincoln Stewart leaves on a, a, a backboard and hopefully right. things will be okay. Right. So Billy Hilton and Colton Clemens are playing inside linebacker for you. Th th those guys don't have a ton of experience. Well, uh, at this point in the season, a lot of times, you know, you get some guys nicked up and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we're praying for Lincoln. Um, I, I think everything's going to be all right uh, from what I've been told. The, uh, the young guys that went in, uh, <laughs> you know, it, that was one of those things where uh, it, it was a big game. Uh, we had to get them stopped, and uh, those guys played well. And uh, can't say enough about uh, the effort from both sides and uh, just thankful. Thankful for this group of kids. Uh, they've been awesome. And uh, we, we've got an opportunity to go down and, and play arguably one of the best teams uh, in the country. Uh, they were undefeated at the FCS level. And uh, they're going to have two weeks of prep time. And so uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But uh, we'll get our guys uh, back tomorrow working. and. Uh, We'll uh, see what we can come up with. Devin Watson had a pretty good day for you, Coach. He's a player. Uh, Devin's one of those guys that uh, he's athletic. Uh, and it's interesting. I was right there on the sideline. I was watching the quarterback, and then I saw Devin. I saw his eyes, and he saw the quarterback. And when the shoulder turned, he throttled just a little bit, and he broke on the ball. And uh, thank God he caught it. And, uh, you know, it, it was a great play, difference maker. I mean, you, you know, if, uh, if we don't stop them, they probably have an opportunity to kick a field goal or uh, score there at the end, probably more so a, a field goal. But uh, it was a tough game, uh, two teams that uh, really wanted it and, uh, you know, just came down to a few plays. You have 20 plus guys who walked on senior day that yeah. were close to going through their entire career without getting into a playoff. Right. Right. Uh, what does it mean to you as a coach to know that these guys now have had that experience? Well, uh, for over a decade, I, I mean, we were, you know, in the conversation. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, we had three years that we were just average. and. Uh, and I, I can't tell you exactly why. Uh, you can point to a lot of things, but we just didn't get it done. I didn't get it done. And uh, I, I think with uh, a lot of the young kids uh, wanting to challenge and step up and, and be, uh, be starters, I, I think it created more competition. And uh, I think we did an unbelievable job this off season, and then in preseason camp, I thought it was our best camp ever. And uh, we've uh, we, we've had misfortune, adversity throughout the year. You know, you lose your first two quarterbacks. You you have a situation with Michael Roach. Um, yeah, John Patterson. He goes down, and uh, and it's not just little injuries it's it's almost catastrophic and so uh good lord has blessed us blessed those two guys um 
we're, we'll be praying for Lincoln. I'll go over there and see him uh, after I get done. But uh, good group of guys, really a good group of guys, and uh, very blessed to have an opportunity to, to coach him. See you in Charleston. Thanks. Devin, talk us through the the first interception and then the second. Well, I saw the quarterback had his eye downfield, and then he took it back to his check down. So I saw that, and I broke down on it, and he threw it right to me. And the second one, uh, me and Jaleel was confused on the call, and he just – I I was just standing there, and he threw it, he threw it to me. So that's all God right there, man. It's, so you decided to be a good idea to catch it. Yeah, Yes, sir. So when you caught it, did you realize, oh, my gosh, we're, we're going to win this game? I don't know what was going through my mind. I was just trying to get the offense closer. I wasn't even – I wasn't even, I didn't even know what the what I was thinking. What does it mean to you to get a playoff win and to go on to play the Citadel again next? I mean, coming in, I, I wanted to change the culture. Like, everybody – like, we've been grinding since summer. We've been grinding in the interim. So, this is what we want. This is what we've been working for. So, it ain't – like, it, it, we don't – it's not a surprise to us. And we, ready, we want Citadel again because we can't – the way we went out, we're not going to let that happen again. Thank you, Devin. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, fourth year with the program. You finally get to the playoffs. So what was it like out there? I mean, uh, the feeling was phenomenal. But more importantly, we came away with the dub. And um, more importantly, Lincoln, you know, Lincoln Stewart, he's going to be able to walk again. And, you know, thank God for that. So the win, you know, everything is good about that. But the fact that we get our brother back is even more special. And it's been some kind of year in that respect. Yeah, we've had a lot of. A lot of freak accidents, so you know that just shows how much um, how much character and how much adversity this team has been able to go through and how we're able to overcome it. So Lincoln goes down with an injury, and you look behind you; it's Billy Hinton and uh, Colton Clemens, good players, but not a ton of experience. What was it like knowing that? Okay, I got some guys behind me who are good, but they haven't been through this as much as some others. Um, you know, well, hopefully they were able to you know weather the storm a little bit, but. Um, it just shows how, like, how good the coaching is and how much trust we have in everybody to go out there and, you know, do their assignment. Citadel. <laughs> Citadel, yes, sir. I've, I've been anxious to get this one back. So, you know, we're going to go out there. We're going to be the best uh, Wofford we can be, and the outcome should be in our favor. Hey, you get to keep playing. How about that? Yes, sir. It feels <laughs> good, man. What was it like it, from the booth? It just looked like it was grinded out, physical. Is this the most physical game you played in this year? Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely it was a physical game. I mean, it's kind of they, they run similar defense to what we run against. So, like, it's, it's about the same as going against our defense at practice. But, I mean, it was a physical team. Talk about the touchdown run where you popped through in the second half. I mean, it, 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 was, it had been, we had been trying to get it up in there, and we, we was uh, saying it's going to bust open in a minute. And, I mean, I, I think I have a little extra inspiration. I mean, offense line have been going hard and stuff, and, like, my teammate Lincoln just went down, and I was like, man, we got to get this thing in here no matter what. I mean, ain't, can't nobody stop us. You think about the year of Lincoln, Michael Roach, uh, John Patterson. It, it's been a crazy kind of year, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been it's been a crazy year, but it's been it's been special, man. I mean, like them them boys mean everything to us, and I mean when when they go down, somebody else step up right next right right behind them, and I mean we just we just playing for them really. Another shot at the Citadel. Another shot at the Citadel. I mean, it feel good. We ready for this one. All right, Terrence, tell us about the block punt. Um, well, pre um before the snap, um, I looked over to my teammate um Colton. And I was, and I was just getting to um, number 84. He was gonna block him. I got to get into his head. I was just telling him, um, I'm gonna go this way, and I'm gonna go back this way. And so like, I'm gonna block the punt. And as soon as the snap, I got a great jump on the snap. It must have got to him because I came through free. And I saw on um, the punter, his trajectory was looking a little low. And I feel like if I would have hit the shield straight on, I probably wouldn't have blocked him to get my hands up because of the contact. So if I just go straight up. If I get high enough, I know I'm going to be over the shit and I'll block the punt and it, everything unfolded just like that. It seemed like a, a, a very intense game, a very physical game. What, can you rate it compared to other games this year, the intensity level? Uh, they were a very physical team. Um, they came out, O-line, very physical. They're fast, can move. So we just know how, like, every, each game has been in the SoCon. Each game gets harder and harder because every team's looking to win. And so just coming from that experience of being in the SoCon play and playing them is just like the, the level of intensity just increased. So we just, in order to, to beat them, we have to match it and go above what their level was. And for the most part, I think we did our job. We had a few players go down, but 
at the end of the day, we kept fighting and kept coming back harder and harder to not fold it. I know your coaches, many of them played for Wofford in the playoffs in the past, and I know the coaches like to say, hey, the playoffs are different, the playoffs are special. Now that you've experienced that, what, what, has, what was it like for you? Every possession was a game-changing possession. It was like, if you come out here and you don't do your assignment, you may not get the second opportunity, you're like, oh, I'll come back next now, because like when I blocked that punt and offense, um, um, they didn't get in, but Tyler got on um, safety. It was like, because I blocked that punt and Tyler got a safety, that one point was the difference. It was like everything counts. Like you can't take nothing for granted because you might not get that chance. So we just came out and we had in our mind, like we're going to try to take advantage of it. They got a few yards and got a few points on us, but just got to keep bouncing back for adversity because it only makes us stronger. Another option team next week, the Citadel. You get them again. Your thoughts on playing them? Uh, this is like. This is what we've been looking for, actually. Like, we came out with the mindset, we let the first one go out the hook, go out the hook. but we went out and get a chance in the playoff, we will see them again. And it's like we predestined it to happen. It happened. We came out one, four straight, and just won one in the first round of the playoff. Now we get to play them all over again in their place and probably get a victory over there and give them a taste of how it felt when they got one over here. So for this senior class, they had their first taste of the postseason. And it turned out very, very well for the Wofford Terriers on Saturday at Gibbs Stadium. A defensive struggle, a hard-hitting football game, and Wofford wins it 15-14 to in a contest in which the Terriers, who averaged close to 300 rushing yards per game, win with just 141 yards on the ground. The defense saves the day for Wofford, and the Terriers advance to the round of 16 in the national playoffs as they will now get ready to travel to Charles. Saturday to take on the Citadel Bulldogs at Johnson Haygood Stadium. The Terriers have not lost since they were beaten by the Citadel in late October here in Spartanburg in a heartbreaking overtime defeat. The two teams will meet at 6 o'clock Saturday evening in Charleston. I'm Mark Hauser. Thanks for watching Terrier Vision.